Hello. Today I'm going to build a simple modulation network in Reactor. I get a lot of questions about modulation in general. Uh, how do I modulate the pitch with an LFO? How do I modulate this with that? And so today I'm going to create a very generic modulation system that you can use with any modulator signal and any knob. So let's get started. The first thing I'm going to do is create a new macro to hold our work in. And I'm going to rename the uh, input min and create two more inputs called max and step. And what these three inputs are going to do is define our knob for us. It's going to give us the minimum and maximum values of the knob and also the step size. So we're going to subtract the min from the max, which is going to give us the total range of the, of the knob, and multiply the output by 0.5, and multiply that by a receive module. And we're going to use the receive module to receive whichever modulator you choose from a list. I'm just going to make that visible and change it to have a menu look on the, on the panel. I'm designing this modulation network with the idea that all of the modulators are going to be between the range of negative 1 and 1. So what we've just done is multiplied that value by half of the range of our knob. So if our knob is going from uh, 0 to 24, then we're going to get a range of negative 12 to positive 12. Okay, so we can take that value and add it to our knob. And all we need to do is make sure that this knob has the same um, attributes of the min and max inputs. And we're going to quantize uh, the sum of that by our step size to make sure that we have a final value that makes sense. And we could send that straight to the output, um, but we've neglected to do one thing. We still need to clip the final value to make sure we're still within the range uh, between min and max. So I'm going to create a new macro to hold that information, and it's going to receive uh, max and min as inputs. And we're just going to use some separators to clip the values, and I'll show you how in just a second. So let's start by creating separator and a value and a merge module. And if our input is greater than max, then we're going to trigger max. And if it's not, we're just going to let it through, and we'll merge those two values together. And next, we're going to do pretty much the exact same thing with the uh, minimum value. We'll need another separator value and merge for that. And so when we're done doing this, um, our modulation plus our knob is always going to stay within the range uh, specified by the knob itself. Okay, so that should work. Um, let's rename our macro and then create a modulator to test it out with. I'm going to use an LFO just for simplicity's sake. And we can give it a knob to control frequency and a constant amplitude of 1, and we're going to send the sine output to a send module. So when we add that new send module, it automatically gets added as an entry in our receive menu. So we'll be able to um, choose that as an option from the panel. 
I'm just going to give the pitch knob a range negative 12 to 12 and a step size of 1 and give our macro the same inputs so it works correctly. And I'm going to use this knob to uh, modulate the pitch of a sine wave. So let's add a note pitch and a sine oscillator. And we can add the uh, incoming pitch to our knob. And then uh, just for keep things simple here, I'm just going to use a gate to control the amplitude for now. And we can run the output of our sine oscillator directly into the output of the instrument. And we're ready to give it a test run. Oh, except we have to rearrange our panel first, as always. Okay, so let's talk about how we can expand this concept into an entire ensemble. To begin with, um, I forgot to mark this, but we need to have the receive and the properties uh, enable switch off. That'll allow us to turn off our modulations. And now I'm going to add a new knob to this um, called depth. And it is just going to have a value from 0 to 1, and it's going to control the depth of the modulation. And you can connect it very easily like so. And now I'm going to replace the frequency knob of the LFO um, with one of our uh, mod knobs that we've just created. And then that'll allow us to have the frequency of the LFO be modulated while the LFO is modulating something itself. This gives us a lot more flexibility. Um, so we're going to need to change uh, the min and step size values here. And of course we're going to have to change the uh, range and step size of the knob itself as well. Okay, now let's just duplicate this whole structure and then we'll have two LFOs to uh, modulate our stuff with. And as always, when we return to the panel view, uh, uh, it's a mess again. Probably should have rearranged this uh, macro before duplicating it twice, but at this point we can just change them all real quick. Okay, now let's uh, give it a shot. Okay, that's all for today.